Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is game three between Huck and the Little One in the first game of Group B of the King of the Beta Tournament. The top two players of the King of the Beta Tournament will advance to the final four that, of course, will be um, casted live at the StarCraft II Countdown Party hosted by myself and DJ Wheat at Harvey Mudd College in Los Angeles, California. You should absolutely attend if you can. And here we are going directly into game three. This is the last deciding match. It is a best of three between Little One and Huck. We're currently tied up 1-1. This is the first game in the group, so this will really, uh, right out the gate, put a lot of pressure on the other players to be able to come up and win uh, a game. Looks like Little One uh, spawning here in the bottom as the Teal Terran at the right. We have Huck as the green Protoss. Huck again with that very, very early scout, sending that probe out right away. He easily makes up for this by the fact that he just gets so, so many probes early on. He just really delays getting that gateway up. Little One doing his same style, getting that Supply Depot behind the back of his base. And Little One, again, showing his trademark creativity in Game 1. Or excuse me, in, I guess, both games. <laughs> in both games, he's been doing this weird barracks, heli, and rush early on. And then, I guess, transitioning into tank battle cruiser for good old 35-minute games. Regardless, I'm happy he's doing it because I'm just as excited to observe these games as you are. So here comes Huck's classic probe harass. It doesn't even matter that it's a four-player map. Huck will get his probe to your base first and begin scouting it right away and harassing it right away. Look at both these SCVs in deep yellow life. And Huck, of course, has almost healed that probe back to full health. And the second he does, whips right back around, begins whacking away at that SCV. And look down to zero shields. Huck's going to be spinning himself around once again. Curious to see how Huck is going to be pulling out for this game, it looks like he was favoring big warp gate pushes early. Looks like Little One was favoring big marine hellion pushes early. Don't know if these players are willing to do that same strategy multiple games in a row. But regardless, it makes for some very, very intense games. Looks like Hux Gas has just finished. Second pylon going down. Those probes coming out at a very fast rate. Ordinarily, most players get this gateway finished right around uh, 17 foods so they can start that cybernetics core but it looks like huck is getting a cybernetics core around 19 or maybe he's not getting it i don't see a cybernetics core anywhere it looks like he is just caught up with this probe in the middle of the map that looks like has just died so there's the very late cybernetics core by huck but once again the one thing where huck never misses a beat is getting up as many probes as possible devoting a lot of chrono boost to it looks like chrono boost is being saved always good to spend your first set of chrono boost on the stalker and the warp gate helps you get those out very 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 quickly looks like little one is not going to be doing any of his usual shenanigans and huck oh huck also getting a defensive zealot up early this definitely helps deal with those obnoxious early pushes and trying to get some free probe kills excuse me is not going to work out for the little one today he's trying to bounce around to the back to get in some good position but oh i don't think huck needs to be drawing these three guys off mining at all huck definitely needs to be popping guys into that gas geyser he is getting warp gate right away still has a lot of chrono boost uh saved up and the little one so interestingly getting a reaper now wow reaper straight into factory you never see the style of play elsewhere but here is a hellion coming out very early a hellion one of the biggest damage dealers in starcraft 2 i mean for the buck, it does more damage than pretty much any other gateway unit. The problem is they're just so flimsy, and you have to get them in a good line to be able to maximize the damage. And it looks like that one Marine was able to make it home, but either way, Huck is going to be able to put a ton of pressure on early. Uh-oh, here comes one Hellion. Oh my god, Huck is, has it. Whoopsie daisies. Looks like he was in an aggressive mood, wanted to do some attacking early, and it looks like it would have worked. It would have worked wonders, but this one Hellion is just such a huge threat that Huck is pulling everything back to try to get into good position. And here comes a little bit of probe roasting. One shot does get off. He is able to target fire one of these probes, and Huck once again pulling a little bit too many guys off mining. And here comes a Reaper. Five seconds later, a little one loves his harass. There goes one probe. Is another probe going to go down? Yes, there's the third probe. And fourth probe, including that uh, harass from that Hellion. Oh, it doesn't quite get the fifth probe out. Decent job by the little one, but I mean, really, if Huck had just continued to press with that Stalker and Zealot, he could have done some decent damage to the little one. A lot of players are increasingly liking getting that Zealot while the Cybernetics Core is building. It helps you stay alive to some early rushes, and you get to put pressure on your opponent. And it looks like Huck is not going to be doing any Warp Gate antics this game. He is just going for the very fast robotics facility, getting that Immortal up almost immediately. No additional gateways coming up at all. Warp Gate also going down as well. A little bit more crackle and flames coming from those Hellions, who of course are silly enough to smoke in their little uh, vehicles full of Octane. Would not recommend that. 
but incredibly fast starport. This is looking almost Jinro like, this huge rush to the starport. It looks like he's also saving up for a raven. Ordinarily, he'd be getting a banshee by now. Okay, well, I guess he just, you know, forgot to build a banshee right off the bat, but getting supply blocked, a little uncharacteristic of the little one. He is building another supply depot right away. Hellions and Marauders still continuing to be produced. Very effective way to deal with early gateway pushes, but this Immortal is going to do so much damage. Second Immortal coming down right now. No Observer up yet for Huck. He just wants to be able to get in there and do maximum damage. Uh-oh, here comes a whole bunch of Hellions. They're going to try to swing around to harass, but there's a lot of Marauders on this high ground, and this is a big enough force that really the little one needs to pull back and defend. If he tries to get over eager and go for the, the kill, um, he will definitely lose his main. There's a nice force field, was able to snipe off that Hellion, but of course it does mean that the little one is going to have enough time to get that bunker up. Here's a Banshee also coming down. Is there Cloak? No, no Cloak at all. Cool mix from the little one. Fat, the, it's a variation on the 111 style where you have one barracks, one factory, one starport. He's getting a lot of marauders. He's getting hellions and banshees. He is going to be able to do tons of damage to ground. The banshees are one of the most effective ways to deal with some sort of obnoxious uh, immortal action going on. But it looks like um, some colossi coming up soon as we see the robotic spay. Uh, en route, but uh-oh, a warp prism. It looks like the immortal drops are coming up. One of my absolute favorite strategies in the game. You can annihilate armored units and buildings so easily. There is the warp prism coming up right now. Huck loves these aggressive one base strategies, but here come the Hellions again. Oh no, that is why you desperately need to have control of that Zelnaga Watchtower at all points in time. These are rushing right up. Oh, immediately annihilating a huge row of probes. Oh my god. Huck taking so much damage. These Hellions may have just won the game for the little one. Oh my god, look at the little one way up at 60 food, now down to 54 with the loss of those. But look at the unit counting station, that's where it's very revealing. Doubling his opponent's probe count. God, the little one hates probes, they just ruin his whole life. And he has had a Hellion early, Reapers early, huge Hellion push, and now a Banshee killing off probes. And as we can see, the little one at 33 workers, but his opponent at 14. But either way, Huck is coming in to try to get a little bit of revenge. There is not too much here that can possibly deal with this. Uh, looks like one Raven is out. He's going to drop. He's just going to go ahead and fight these guys a little bit. Most of them are armored. The only ones that are not armored are those Hellions, which do almost no damage. And, of course, those hardened shields are very, very, very helpful. Uh, helps you stay alive for quite some time. And then you just float around a little bit. Let those heal. Looks like the scores are pretty close. I mean... Little One has lost quite a few units in that harass, but going to the income tab, look at this. The Little One at about 1,100 and Huck down at 500, doubling his opponent's income. That really goes to show you how just one misfire, uh, just letting those Hellions up once can just be game-changing. Uh-oh, huge push by Huck. Look at his great strategery as he is just attacking at multiple fronts at once. This is not a good unit mix to have for the Little One right now. He has one almost dead Banshee and a handful of Marauders against a force that can take it out quite easily, but Huck just not feeling comfortable, wants to return home. Is there a Colossus coming out? Yep, Colossus about to finish. There is an Observer out as well. Going to be able to deal with those Cloak Banshees a little bit more easily, and it looks like Huck might be going for some kind of Colossus drop. He just unloaded both of those units, both the Immortals, from the Warp Prism right now. Trying to scout around, trying to find this Colossus. There he is. He's just hanging out at the top of the base. But no, no, no. We definitely want you involved in the battle. Not sure exactly what Huck is doing with this Warp Prism. I would have preferred to see him be a little bit more aggressive with it. But now that there's a Viking out, that will shut down a lot of that fun. But it looks like Huck is just preparing for a huge push. Does he have range upgraded? No. He is just relying on two Warp Gates making Stalkers. And then a lot more units to harass. There's that Warp Prism there. Checking out everything that's up. Oh no, it's getting caught at the worst place possible. Any place by a Viking is a bad place to be for a flying unit. And the little one, look at this. The shoot follow micro. He's even throwing down an auto turret to try to take it down. And the warp prism falls. Oh god, Huck. Big blunder that's going to allow little one to have quite a lead at this early stage. And in particular, little one does not need to really worry about harassment. He's feeling comfortable at home in his base. No need to begin panicking. Little one also adding on plenty of banshees. Banshees are a unit that integrate well with a player who is kind of forced to make a lot of stalkers early on. If you go Banshee, Marauder, your opponent will have a lot of stalkers, and both the Banshees and Marauders do significant damage against that. And look at the Banshees trying to get in here, and look at this getting cloaked. Oh no, taking out all the anti-air. More harassment by the little one. He just does not ever want to engage his opponent directly. He will just harass you to death. And taking a few 